live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's live coverage, day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Um, keynotes, amazing announcements, great vibe here. Again, 52,000 people here at Amazon reInvent. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. We're here again, sixth year, just an amazing amount of content, two sets. Uh, Aaron Kelly, general manager of the Enterprise Services Marketing, runs basically product market for a lot of groups, a lot of the areas. Great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks for spending the time. It's great to be here, John, Dave. Really appreciate it. All right, so, how hard is your job? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were just on an analysis of the, of the Andy's keynote, and there's so much to talk about. You have so many things under your purview. Right. You got a broad portfolio of Amazon services. It's really, I mean, crazy good for you guys. The business is going great, highly profitable. Um, how do you do it all? What's the, how do you keep track of it? What's your favorite child? Yeah. Like, uh, no, tell us. You know, it's a great point. There's a lot of, there's so much going on, and uh, this, speed and the pace of innovation, but it's exactly what builders are looking for, right? They want to be able to come to AWS and not have to compromise because they want to see every tool that they need for every job. And so for me, I've got a pretty broad portfolio. I've really been excited this week about a lot of our compute announcements, right? So our announcements around a new instance family with A1 uh, based on some custom silicon, uh, AWS Graviton processor, really excited about that. Bringing the ARM community to the cloud for the first time, we're, we're jazzed about that one. Uh, and that's, that motivation there is lowering costs for ARM-based apps, it, right? I it, mean, it's really twofold, right? It's bringing the ARM community to the clouds. First time we've got an ARM processor and a large cloud provider, so giving them that scale up, elasticity, pay for what you use kind of model. Uh, but then the second thing is lowering costs for customers for scale out workloads. So things like web tiers, containerized microservices, um, and you know, in the general purpose area, customers, you think they can save up to 45%, which is meaningful. So we're really excited about that. Uh, that's been, that's been uh, a really neat announcement, a neat project we've been working on for a while. Um, I, I would also say in the area of compute, uh, we've added 100 gigabit networking to a couple of our instance types, uh, C5N based on Intel processors, and that's really been the workhorse in the HPC community. And now with 100 gigabits of networking, we're going to be able to do even more uh, processing, more power, more advanced scenarios there. And it's kind of an interesting dialogue, right? The more data you have, the more compute you need, and it creates this virtuous cycle, and one of the gaps was networking, so bringing 100 gigabits, uh, it really allows those Intel chips to run. Well, yeah. the big data guys are going to eat that up too, I would think. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the links between big data and AP, uh, HPC are exactly clearer, right. you know? Exactly right. Talk about the latency thing. Andy, ta Andy talked to me uh, last Monday about this, I had a long conversation with him about it. Latency matters, you guys listen to customers. Networking, you mentioned, a right. key part of the, part the of flywheel, it. compute storage and networking. It's obviously morphing with the cloud model. You guys are optimizing and raising the bar. How are you guys handling the latency question? Because this comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. You got the on-premises piece now. You guys are doing things in the cloud. How do you market that service? How do you handle the latency? How do you, talk about the role of latency in the portfolio. Well, so there's a couple things in there. I think the first one, what I would sort of highlight is latency within a HPC environment or a machine learning environment. And so that's where, again, this 100 gigabit networking has been really, really powerful. We've also, also announced a, a new uh, networking feature or, or uh, protocol, uh, Elastic Fabric Adapter, which actually allows you to go even faster now in some ne networking scenarios. Um, it's particularly interesting, again, in HPC. So we've really worked hard in reducing the latency throughout the data centers for these higher end compute scenarios. When you have the custom silicon, I want to just take, yeah. take you through this because EC2 has always been great, but you know, standing up an instance could take 10 seconds. Yeah. Lambda now you can do in hundreds of milliseconds. Right. By having the custom silicon, how does that impact the network stack? Because I would imagine that the performance gains on having kind of a custom silicon around EC2 and the compute would be a game changer for running things under the covers, for instance, like a VMware or mm -hmm. you know, managing security mm -hmm. uh, boundaries issues. What's yeah, the, well so we made these investments a few years ago with the Nitro system, where we took a look at the current instance environment and said, hey, if we can offload some of that compute or networking to purpose-built chips on those cards, we can actually free up more capacity for those processors to run faster and give you more value basically for each instance type. So that was part of the beginning of the Annapurna Labs 
and the Nitro system was kind of offloading this networking uh, into, into those uh, custom built chips. So that's, that's the start. Yep. And then what we've done is the Nitro system has allowed us to innovate much faster. Yep. So we've added three times more instances this year than last year because we're building on the, the, Nitro, the Nitro system. Talk now the Graviton processor is, is sort of just one more example. We've added new processors from AMD and of course we've continued to advance with our Intel chipset as well. Talk about, um, I want to get just change gears for a little bit because you're yeah. uh, uh, and product marketing executive general manager. Um, you know, Andy talks about the, the new way, the culture, Amazon, old guard, new guard. You know, traditional product marketing, you can take a product, kind of bring it to market, right. waterfall it out at the beach, and then you do all the activities. How do you uh, raise the bar in your job where you got to go out and take, not just products, just services now. So you have a series of, a lot of services. How does that change how you do product marketing? And how is that different from people who might not know how you guys operate? Talk a little bit about the culture of product marketing at Amazon. Sure, yeah. So I would say first and foremost, it's all, it's all about education, right? So we really want to make sure that whenever there's a new service that comes out, we're super clear on what does it do, what is the benefit, um, and how can customers take advantage of it. And we're trying to position it in a way that a, what we, we like to say internally, sort of a non-technical CIO can understand. So whenever you look at a new service, you look at our detail pages, we put a tremendous amount of rigor and clarity, make it very simple, make the value, value pop clear. I think the second thing we're starting to do, and we're seeing it reflected in our products as well, is how can we tell more aggregated stories? So today during the keynote, you saw Andy talk about abstractions, right? And one of the first ones he mentioned was Control Tower, which is one of my products, so I got a little passion around it. Um, but what's interesting about that is customers were coming to us and saying, okay, I love AWS, I love all these tools, I love the granularity of managing uh, things at a certain level and setting policies at a certain level, but you guys have thousands, millions of customers running, running AWS. What's the right way to set up my environment? Can you give me a blueprint to do it, to set it up and run it in a very secure and compliant way? So Control Tower is a great example of a, both a service that helps you do that, as well as a marketing message that says, hey, let's look at this now in, in totality. Let's let you set up these environments faster based on best practices, and now, and now you can kind of control in a, in a much easier so way. So you're basically trying to simplify the message so it's not speeds and feeds. Well, what, I'm, what, I, what I would say is we want to simplify the message so that everyone can understand, but we don't want to lose track of those builders, those, those tinkers that get in there. Yeah. They want the speeds and feeds, they want the knobs, yeah. and they, part of their differentiation as a developer is understanding all the details. So we yeah. want to have both. It's, well, the also right trying to, it's also trying to help people figure out what to use where. I mean, as your portfolio grows and grows right. and grows, the, the complexity becomes amazing for some people and say, okay, help me figure out mapping to my workload, mm -hmm. what to use where, what's my you know, best, the best cost solution. Right. Sometimes it's hard to figure that stuff out, isn't it? Yeah, well, it, it's, again, it's this balance between we want to be able to provide the right tool for the right job. Yeah. I think Andy had a nice analogy today in the keynote where he talked about you know, building, fixing a house with just a hammer, right? Yeah. And instead, you're going to want to have that right tool for the right job. And so part of our job in product marketing is making it very clear, when do I use this particular instance type versus this versus this? What are the trade-offs? Uh, and that's a key part of what we of yeah. our job. And that resonates with, with people because, I mean, there's a lot of redundancy in tools too in the marketplace. People, a lot of us have the same tool, the yeah. same hammer. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys have a variety of services. So the question I got to ask you though is, as you look at the, the services and Am Amazon's role, Amazon Web Services here at the event, how would you summarize what's going on here? Because there's so much, you know, Andy had a slide up this, that signal from the noise, which is our, we, we had our phrase, extracting the signal from the noise, which is kind of fun, but you have so much signal, this noise, and this, there's too much signal. <laughs> how would you encapsulate, for someone watching, what is happening this year? How, where is Amazon for customers? What's the positioning? How should they think about it? You mentioned builders. Yeah. How would you kind of summarize what the action is going on here? Right, so I would kind of talk about it like this. I mean, first and foremost, I would say, we're adding more capability um, and building the broadest and deepest platform so that builders can always, they never have to compromise, right? They always can find the right tool they need for the right job. So first and foremost, that speed of innovation, that pace of innovation is continued, and if there was one message that people should take away is, wow, they are still innovating like crazy, um, they have an amazing amount of uh, technology, and so I don't have to compromise when I come to AWS. So that's kind of the first main message. Yeah. Then I think the second thing, uh, what I would say, which kind of follows on that is, okay, but we also recognize that we've got a lot of services, and now we need to start to build some services that bring these together, and again, control, 
is a great example of that. Lake Foundation is a great example of that for Data Lake. So that's sort of the second thing, is we are starting to create services that are abstraction layers that bring together yep. the, a lot of the details to solve very specific problems. The third thrust that I would highlight is just um, the amazing focus uh, around machine learning and AI, and just how that has been such a key uh, investment area for us, it's been such a key ask from our customers, and our mission there is to really just democratize it. We want yeah. every builder to be able to bring machine learning and add it to their, their solutions. And the number of services you saw announced today in the keynote, as well as yeah. some yeah. You know, earlier this week and last week, uh, just shows that our commitment and focus on, on that. And uh, extending EC2 to support some of that stuff. Exactly yeah, right. Distributing I mean, training and, and the like. I'm a Star exactly Trek right. fan, so I always go to the Scotty. Scotty, more horsepower. You guys are bringing more power to the table with each compute and these abstractions. Right. I want to get your thoughts on something that I talked with Andy about in depth um, last uh, week before the show. Um, and we were kind of riffing on this notion of a new kind of developers emerging. He talked about it in the keynote about yeah. a new persona a developer, a new mm -hmm. kind of developer is mm -hmm. emerging. And he also kind of talked about net new workloads. I wrote about it in, in my stories on SiliconANGLE and on Forbes about it, which is there's kind of a, all this goodness going on at the abstraction layer yeah. with a lot of horsepower right. you know, enabling things that were hard to do. AI is a great example. AI has yeah. been around since I was in college in the 80s and 90s and now it's, it's it rose up with power. Right. What are some of those persona developers look like? How do you look at that new net new workloads? What's your reaction to that? Because this seems to be a big trend. That's not your old school developer banging out code. Now there's open source communities, we get that, but yeah, yeah. in the working day in life of companies, right. people are building apps. Right. What's this new persona developer look like? Well, there's, there's different personalities, right? So there's the, the core tinkerer like you've talked about. There's now the data science that's coming in and taking advantage of these machine learning tools. You know, you have kind of a cloud administrator that's trying to look across everything, and they want to build as well, right? They don't want to just sit there and manage dashboards, they want to build as well, and so we're seeing that in, in some of those personas. Uh, and of course, app developers is another big part of it. Now you could talk to Firecracker too, right? So we can talk a little bit. So yeah. I met with Adrian yesterday, and of course people used to poke at Amazon a lot. And say, hey, what about open source? You right. Give them back to open source. So Firecracker, explain that and and sort of what you guys are doing there, and specifically in open source. Right. Well, so that's a great example of where we had we had some technology, and what Firecracker is is uh, you know it's a container for microservices that can run in a non-virtualized environment, and we've used it as the underpinning for Lambda and Fargate. Um, and we looked at it and we said, you know what, we want more people to be able to take advantage of this because it's about saving money, it's about improving security, and so we decided to open source it. And so that was one of our announcements on, on uh, Monday was open sourcing Firecracker and making it available uh, to the community. Um, and so we're really excited about it. One of the things that I want to ask you as we wrap up here, first of all, great job on all the work you guys have done at Amazon. Impressive to see Thank that. You. The level of services that you guys are announcing. Yeah. It's become a competitive advantage and you've got a great trajectory, a lot of learnings. Yeah. And as Andy says, there's no time compression for experience and, and, right. and, and time. And which is good for the competitive strategy. But as you look forward to 2019, um, what's your plan? What are your goals? How are you going to raise the bar? Uh, in term you guys use a lot. What's your, what's your goals? What are, you guys, what are you trying to accomplish? You know, I mean, the number one thing that we spend our time on is listening to customers and saying, what's next? What do you need next, right? 90% um, of our innovation comes from customer input, uh, and so now we've got a new wave of services we're introducing. We're going to spend time with customers. They're going to give us feedback. We're going to make those services better, and then we're going to yeah. find new places where they want us to go. So uh, next year is going to be just as exciting as this <laughs> year. And you know, next year when I see you guys here, it's yeah. we're going to talk about a whole new wave of things coming out. So you're certainly running hard. And, and the other thing I noticed in, in learning how Amazon works and, and getting deeper into, under the covers there, you got a growing field great professional services yeah. and Salesforce that's not trying to you know, grab the wallet from the customer. You guys have a long game perspective. That's right. Carla um, had a great conversation with her about this. You have to service that. How are you going to um, enable these guys? You mentioned education earlier. This is a big part of your plan, right? I mean, yeah. the, the integration with the field, mm -hmm. how does that work? Are you going to provide the messaging, all the tools? Because that's growing, you've got to yeah. service that. What's your perspective on oh, the field? Oh, sure, no, you're, you're highlighting my Q1 goals right now. Uh, no, it's really important to dial up that connection because as, the, as we get more and more services, our field sellers, what's great about our field teams is they're so aligned to customer needs, so they don't carry specific quotas on individual products and things like that. They're really focused on, hey, what do you need, and how can I use the full portfolio to help you out? 
And so part of then our challenge as a product marketer is not only educating customers yeah. on our products, but educating the field on our products and which ones are most viable for what scenario. So that's a big part of our, our focus as well within the yeah. product marketing function is, hey, how do we really nail these scenarios, very crisp, crisp very compelling, both for the customer and the field seller to say, oh, Ooh, I saw that yes. pattern in a customer. Let me go bring this technology forward and, and talk to them about it. So really excited about next year. And you hit on something else that I think is really important, which is this long-term view, is our sales teams, they've always taken a long-term view with customers. They're not sitting there at the end of the quarter trying yeah. to you know, you know, close the deal. It's all about that, that long-term view. And, and it's allowed us to make some of these investments we've had. We've you made. guys also use your own technology too. I noticed a lot of the different groups, um, you got all the goodness of cloud. You got to use some of that tech. You probably got some machine learning waiting around the AI bots and you know, all kinds of cool tools you're integrating in, dog fooding or whatever they call it. Yeah, well, I mean, the reason why we've been able to add so many services every year is because we build on our own platform, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And so you can have a very small team. We talk about the two pizza team. A very small team is able to build these services because they use AWS in its entirety. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so it's very, very exciting as these things get connected. Like last week we talked about um, uh, predictive auto scaling. So one of the features, auto scaling has been a pretty pop popular feature over the years where people can scale up and scale down a large fleet of EC2 instances. Yeah. Well now we've added machine learning to that where it'll now predict when the scaling should happen. So yeah, right. it allows you to scale up your EC2 instances ahead of time yeah. uh, based on historical patterns. So there's ML coming into yeah. everything and we serverless do. is booming too. I mean that's going to yeah. be a big part of your focus. By the way, you mentioned the fleets. I love this. We haven't talked about it much on theCUBE, but this notion of fleets is pretty, pretty powerful. Right. You know, having just a uh, you know, bun bunch of fleets ready, of servers ready to go. Ready to go and yeah. being able to manage across the different yeah. Pricing models is also very, very powerful. I want to really ramp up very, very quickly, yeah. take advantage of sort of spot instances in those moments with really big cost savings, yeah. as well as ramp back down. Hey, uh, keep, keep adding functionality, keep removing all the, the barriers, lowering the price, making it high performant, and I love that business model. A lot of companies yeah. don't have that, so right. congratulations. No, we just always want to add more. We want to give customers more tools so they can have the right tool for the right job. We want to give them the most powerful platform so they can do the highest end things, as well as give them scenarios where, hey, it's a little bit lower cost, and it's for smaller workloads. Like, you don't yeah. want to overpay and over, be over-provisioned. That's yeah. a key part of our I strategy. want it all and I want it now. <laughs> well, you did right. it. Right. done. Well, you did a good yeah. job on the message, Andy was like, must have mentioned builders and right tool for the job. I think there's a drinking game going on That's on right. that. He yeah. mentioned multiple times. Yeah. Congratulations, Aaron. Thank hey, Kelly, thank hey, you. Thanks, John, Dave. Thanks really for coming. Right. time on theCUBE. General Manager, Amazon uh, Product Marketing here inside theCUBE, breaking down what's going on, what's his goals, how Amazon keeps up with the pace. Good insight. I'm John Furrier, Dave Stay with us for more coverage after this short break.